Hi everyone, welcome to the, uh, the session five of the uh, Higher Education Virtual Conference um, provided by Turnkey and uh, sponsored in partnership with, uh, with Microfocus. Um, hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the session so far. Just a, a quick recap on uh, the sessions that we've had so far. So you've um, seen the one about the, um, about the futures of IAM this morning, uh, some myth busting around NetIQ and uh, Microsoft Azure. Um, the, our associate identity management product, um, and also the value of money service that we've been doing uh, with the University of Fed. Um, so today's session, um, we'll be talking about PAM um, with uh, Dave from UAL, and then we'll have a, the final session of the day will be um, some cybersecurity considerations and how that fits, and how I am fits in with that um, with Nick from Microsoft. Um, so just covering um, today's session, um, it will be we'll be talking about all things PAM, um, some of the benefits that, that PAM brings and some of the, the challenges it helps us overcome. Um, but before we get started, just a quick round of, of introductions. So uh, I'm Chris Boyle, uh, I'm the practice director for um, identity at, at Turnkey Consulting. Um, I did the practice and I've got about 20 years of experience in uh, the IAM and uh, PAM world, um, delivered across multiple um, vendors, but predominantly with Microfocus uh, in the academic environment as well. Um, I'm joined today uh, by Dave from uh, University of Arts London. Um, so Dave, I don't know if you want to give a, a quick intro. Sure, I'm, I'm Dave Everett from um, Systems Manager at uh, UAL. Uh, and in, in the context of, of PAM, we have approximately 600 servers uh, that we manage and maintain um, and that we obviously need to protect. Um, Excellent. Cheers, Dave. Um, just a quick bit of housekeeping before we get going. Um, so if you want to ask any uh, questions uh, during the meeting, um, sorry, during the webinar, if you just ask them in the in, in the chat window, um, the team will uh, answer, answer them um, during the meeting. Um, if we uh, if we get time at the end, we will uh, we'll, we'll try to answer any that we, that we don't have. Uh, and if not, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up afterwards um, and, and get those questions answered. Cool. So the format of this uh, this presentation is basically um, we have a, a number of uh, questions and topics that we we wanted to discuss, and then uh, Dave and I will just discuss them as we go through. Um, so one of the first things that we want to try and understand really is um, uh, Dave is what are the challenges um, that the university was facing before uh, before you guys thought about putting um, uh, or deploying Pamela across your estate. Yeah, so essentially we've, we've got about approximately 600 servers that we, we manage, as I said earlier, um, across both Windows and Red Hat. Um, we've kind of um, grown organically, so, so we're still doing things the way we did some time ago. So we're still manually managing servers um, and, and doing permissions on a per-server basis, um, which is kind of quite onerous. And now with the uh, maybe even bigger emphasis on security, we're looking at controlling that access and, and, and probably more importantly, knowing what people are doing on our servers. Um, we, we tend to do things with a broad brush at the moment. Um, we want to try and be a little more surgical with the way that we approach things. So, so we knew that we needed a, a, a tool um, that would help us to actually achieve that. Yeah, excellent. Because you know, managing that number of servers, um, people have a tendency to you know get access to servers, but then there's no there's no kind of review on that access. There's no you know, people can do essentially what what they want, and as they move around the organisation, you know, taking access away from them um, sometimes you know it doesn't happen as often as you like, I guess. No, exactly. That, that that's one of our biggest issues that that people always tell us when they need access, and um, they're not so keen to tell us when they don't need it anymore. So we're trying to to kind of bring that kind of thing under control. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. Um, and it's, I guess it's one of those things where, you know, anybody, when you're implementing another layer of control as well, we, you know, we need to make sure that we, we you know, we give the people uh, that need access to their servers a better way, an easier way of doing it while kind of, you know, reducing risk the organisation and really improving their security posture as well, but also not hindering them to, uh, to, to do it. Yeah, and I say there's also a, a, like um, being able to, by centrally managing it, to, to kind of have a consistent approach as well, rather than it being done piecemeal and, you know, things being done in slightly different ways in different places. So we're trying to, to get those standards, standard processes and procedures in place. Excellent, excellent. So, so what were your options? So anyone out to the, to the market to, to have a look at the, 
um, you know, the different patent products out there? What did you what, what did you find, and, and kind of why did you choose microfilters? Yeah, I mean, there's 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 a vast number of different uh, products out there. Um, we looked at uh, I can't remember now the several several products we we, we gave a um, a, a look at. Um, there were two or three that we actually did a, a deep dive. Um, one of them being the the microfocus product. Um, in general, what I found was was that you would either have systems that were very easy to install, but they they had little flexibility. Um, or you had things which took a bit more thought, um, but then gave you the flexibility required. Um, and we spent we spent a while uh, evaluating. Um, is basically a, an example of something that was there was um, the, the 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 quick 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 install, um, and we also um, demoed the the, the microfocus um, product as well. Yeah, because I guess one of the benefits of the microfocus product is that you know it, it does have that flexibility, and you can you know you can customize it. I guess to the to the nth degree. And and the other thing probably to mention is that you know you also have the the IDM solution set that's already deployed to help you with managing identities across the across the organisation as well. So integrating with that is is obviously going to be easier having that that, that single vendor to manage as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um. So yeah, so just just on the uh, the microfocus um, product there, then. So what, what? Why did you why did you choose that? I know you touched on the features on the on the on the previous slide, but was there anything sort of key to you know were there any real benefits of using micro, microfocus over some of the, the other technologies? Yeah, I, I think the flexibility is the main thing. That the ability to do so much with it. Um, downside is you have to put a lot more effort into into making it happen, but. Um, being able to, to, as I say, be surgical, I think it's probably it, so we can actually do granularity of, of access and that kind of thing in the fullness of time. Um, it's, it's not something we're going to do overnight. Um, we're going to put in a basic basic functional system and then then we will tweak it as we go. Yeah, and I think, you know, while we've been doing the, the, the designs, you know, uh, with a lot of a lot of things within the within the pan world, you know, we've, we've put lots of these types of solutions, and it's never usually the technology that's the that's the problem. It's 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 more around the processes and defining that, and you know, understanding you know what we do, how we deliver that to the organisation, and also how we deliver that to the users as well. So, yeah, exactly. I think I think that's probably one of the things that that we are going to have to understand more. Actually, being able to clearly define exactly what people need to do. Um, but hope, hopefully, we, with the pan product, we'll we'll be able to give them uh, just in, well, just enough permissions to do their job um, without impeding them and without giving too many too many permissions. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the interesting things about, about doing this across the across the university was really just um, kind of understanding all well. First of all, what privilege is, what privilege means to the to the university. So it's not just IT admins and things like that. It's, anybody who uses sort of privilege access across that and you know we looked at all the different kind of personas and the different sort of you know different types of users need access whether it be third parties whether it be auditors etc and you know what access they need and and then how we how we deliver that to them so um, i think that's a it's an interesting exercise um uh, and i guess it, you know it, it, it was some interesting uh, personas that, that came out of that, that that work that we did yeah, I think I think we we learned something, a lot of things, just by going through that and 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 looking at how we do things now, uh, and realised you know just what we do now, and and in many cases what we need to tighten up on. Yeah. So just from a the microfocus perspective, um, I mean one of the one of the good things is um, you know around how it, it looks from a, a UI perspective. So, you know, as with all of the sort of uh, new applications these days, you know, it's got a very um, kind of easy to use web UI. It's all uh, kind of web-based to, to, to use and um, um, simple to use. Um, and it just allows that granular level of access. So when we talked about those different personas, um, you know, giving people just the uh, you know the right amount of information that they need to um, to be able to you know carry out their job. So whether that's a, a third party coming in to, to you know to manage one one service for you as a, as part of a managed service, or whether that's a you know an IT admin that needs access to the entire estate as well, being able to 
uh, kind of control what 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 users see because a, an auditor, for example, is going to want to you know look at logs, whereas a you know a third party will just want to see the, the service that they have access to, um, and the Unix team will want to see something different than the, the Windows platform team. So, um, yeah, I mean, how, how do you feel that the the kind of the user interface is you know from a you know usability perspective? So I think I think it is nice and clean. I mean, we 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 can use a plethora of different tools. Um, and I say, as you know, the, the, the guys who do this all day, every day, I mean, you know, they're quite used to switching from one thing to another. Um, I guess the, those people who don't do it quite so much, it's nice to give them everything in one place. Uh, it's nice to have that that one landing page um, so they can then go go there and, and, and select what they need to do. Uh, obviously, it's a different way of doing things than they do now. Um, but I'm hoping that um, people will actually appreciate that this is, this is a, a nicer way to do the job. Yeah, and I think one of the benefits as well is around getting rid of um, the VPNs uh, across the estate as well. So for when people, so say, say for us, for example, when we're, you know, if we're managing our, our IDM um, server estate as part of the, 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 the managed service, um, you know, typically, well, currently we, we would have to have VPN access and then we would log onto the servers using, you know, RDP or, or something like that. But by implementing PAM, you can give us access to um, just to the, um, you know the, the web page portal, if you like, and then uh, from there we can we can then jump onto those servers in the web browser. So we don't, you know, we, it removes the need for for you know for the organisation to give us um, uh, you know VPN access, and we can just access it directly from the, from the um, um, you know user interface, and therefore it gives you know it reduces another uh, you know another vector, not just for us, but for any third part of the access to the systems. Um, you know. Another um, attack vector for people to, um, to attack you. Cool. Um, so yeah, so just if we just talk about um, challenges in delivery um, and what you kind of see as the uh, some of the challenges that you uh, that you've come across while um, being able to deliver this across the organisation. Yeah, I think um, I think what obviously with a powerful product like this i think you have to do it in a phased approach i think we're what we're what we're doing we're, we're still basically um, building our dev environment to start playing with that to start developing our first policies and so forth but uh, i think what what we've decided to do is we're going to try and just do what we do now but better in pam uh, as, as our first stage so we, we we might not have those granular permissions in but we'll still be going through the PAM interface. We'll be securing it from that level. Um, I'd say, and we will build on that and we will get it better. We'll get it more granular. We'll, we'll understand how people are using it, what they need to be able to do and those kind of things. Um, at the moment, it, I think I think we're going to be on a very steep learning curve when we start doing this because it's one thing for, say, the, the really techie guys in my team to do this stuff. Um, as you kind of devolve that out to other people, actually understanding their perspective on it. Um, I think one of the things that, that has come out is a lot of people are, are concerned that by us, do, by us doing this, they're going to um, impact their ability to do the job. We're going to stop them doing things. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess that's true to a certain extent, but in many respects, it should make life easier for them. They will, they will be able to do what they need to do uh, and no more, which obviously is the critical thing with this. Yeah. And I say, I'd say hopefully with that with the web interface and so forth, it will just be just be nice than having to remember whether you've got to go on a jump box or where you know, where you log in, what the details are for a server. It should be you know uh, a lot easier. Yeah, because you, you, I mean you have uh, various people that might only need privilege access, you know, once every quarter or once every you know <laughs> half year or something like that. So just having that one central location where they can get to everything is obviously obviously beneficial. Um, but by the same token, you know, you want to give the people who do this on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, a, a better way of doing uh, things without impacting, you know, without it, without making their job even harder by adding another another layer, of, you know, of complexity across what they what they what they already do as well. So, I think one of the benefits of 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 Pam is that you can you know you can use that web interface and that's all great, um, you know, for. For, for lots of use cases, again, around sort of third parties and people who don't need access all the time, um, you know, you, you give them that central place where they just, you know, they log into PAM and they get access to what they need. Um, but for the people who, you know, the IT admins and the 
the Intel team and the Unix team, etc. They don't have to stop using their existing, um, you know, to administration tools and stuff like that. They can continue that, but Pam just sits in between them. And the benefit is that they don't have to, you know, remember lots of passwords and or use a, a password safe or anything like that. Pam will just almost deliver that single sign-on experience, but using the tools that they already have. Um, and I think one of the one of the sort of main challenges that we come across. Um, not just for yourselves, Dave, but you know, just in just in general, as we find that a lot of, a lot of PAM projects are, are really a, a kind of a hearts and minds exercise, uh, because as soon as you start introducing new things, people kind of almost push back and say, "Well, uh, hang on, how is this going to affect me? You know, my ability to do my job is it going to take me longer and things like that?" But once they actually see it in practice, um, they see actually it's going to reduce the time, um, <laughs> ironically. So, um, yeah, I think just just. Just the, the, there is a the business communications is just as important as the as the technology. Yeah, so, so I mean, so far the only people who really seen the interface and so forth and, and, and have had a look at using it are the guys in my team. So um, we obviously we you know we haven't been able to show a lot of the businesses how, what it actually means or how how that how that works. So so one of the key things is as we get our devs environment up and we get uh, some the, our first clients on there, then we'll start sharing you know letting people have a look at it and see what it is that it does um just to just to show them that um yeah it's 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 not going to stop them doing their job and hopefully it's just going to be um a lot easier than trying to remember all different logins and you know ip addresses of servers and server names and so forth because it will all be there there and presented for them in a nice um easy easy fashion yeah no absolutely um and i don't think you know as well you know there's a uh, there's there's a tendency just in just as a you know in general where you you know where you have to remember lots of different um, usernames and passwords and then uh, you know, there's a, you know, it's not specific to to kind of UL UAL at all but uh, people have a tendency to you know write passwords down and you know, store them in insecure locations and things like that and then and also not change those passwords for a you know um, a, a large period of time. So one of the benefits of Pam is that that's all taken care of for you. So you're actually reducing the the risk to the organisation because you know passwords are uh, are stored securely within the vault, um, and you can rotate them whenever you like, so that nobody needs to remember the passwords um, you know within those within those different tools. And it's, it's, that's especially um, especially apparent for people who are only using it on a you know on a non regular basis, if you like. Um, so. Yeah, and I spent, and we IT admins as well. Um, you know, they'll have to remember you know lots of passwords for lots of different systems, especially in the, the kind of the Unix world. Um, you know, across across multiple servers. So taking that you know, administration headache away um, is, is is good for them, but it's also good for the organisation because you know they don't have to you know, remember those passwords, and therefore it you know reduces the it reduces the risk to the organisation of those passwords not being changed and, and being compromised. So. Cool. So, from your perspective, Dave, what do you what do you think that the university sees as kind of perceived benefits from uh, from implementing PAM? I think um, I say so. The bullet points there seem to just cover cover most of them off. Um, I say we we're, we're hoping to get better understanding of privileged access. Um, at the moment, I guess we don't re in reality we don't know what's going on on our servers a lot of the time. Um, there is a, a need for the university to to achieve cyber essentials, and having having a privileged access management tool is uh, you know important to that. We need to protect the university. Obviously, the, the the there's an awful lot of bad guys out there who are continually trying to exploit things. Um, universities are often seen as a soft target, um, so we so we need to protect ourselves from that. We need to reduce the risk. We we can't afford we can't afford to lose our systems. Uh, if we if, if we have a si situation where um, our systems go down, it costs us an awful lot of money a day for for, for all the time our systems are down. Um, and yeah, I mean, so all all, all all the usual good things about protecting your 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 um, information, your data. Um, it's it's just one another another level in the in the, the the whole building blocks of the security across the our entire systems or entire ecosystems. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's, there's an interesting statistic that's from sort of Forrester and Gavin that say that like 80% of, um, I think it's like 78% of, uh, you know, of cyber attacks these days involve some form of privilege as well. So really as a, as a, as a priority for, 
for, for any organization really it's control and access to those you know the, the, those privileged states because you know when you when you see the effects of things like ransomware and things like that you can only encrypt what you have access to right so um you know if if a if a privileged um, person gets um you know, gets compromised um, and they've got access to uh, loads of um, uh, loads of infrastructure, then the you know the that infrastructure is then susceptible to being you know attacked via a ransomware outbreak as well. So really reducing uh, reducing that impact as well is absolutely you know essential to um, protecting the university. So did you have one more thing, Dave, about on demand access? Oh yeah, that's that's one of the things we have. We have, we have like um, a specific use case with with some of our suppliers where. They, they only require infrequent access. Our, our current process is to actually disable our accounts when, when they're not in use. Um, and that's fine if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you've got notice of them uh, needing access, you know, they need to do a uh, system update or something like that. But when we have a system outage and they need access now, um, currently it have, we have to jump through a number of hoops to get um, to raise a request to make get the account re-enabled. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of the things that that um, kind of sparked my interest when we were looking at, at the MicroRose product was the ability for somebody to go to the PAM interface uh, and request access to a server, and they can actually be able to generate an email to whoever is responsible for, for access to that server to be able to authorise that access. So instead of there being, you know, you could, I don't know, maybe an hour's delay and get hold of somebody who can enable the account, with this kind of thing, you're talking a few minutes. You've just got to get, you know, you you, you get an email alert if you're one of the the approvers, um, and you tick a box and say, yeah, that's good. You can you've got access, and that that um, should save a considerable amount of time, um, particularly if we've got a system outage. Yeah, no, absolutely, and that's you know fully auditable as well. And then when you combine that with some of the session recording and monitoring as well, it's, it satisfies satisfies some of the you know compliance and audit requirements that that investors have these days. Exactly. I mean, we we, we do that. We do the the control of those accounts for security purposes, and they're disabled so people can't do when we don't know what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. So it's there for a good reason. But when you need the when you need rapid access, you need rapid access. So. We're, we're hoping that this will be one of those big wins, something we've, we've struggled with for quite a while. Yeah, uh, that's excellent. Thanks, Dave. Um, so yeah, I mean, that comes to the, the end of this uh, little mini session that we that we had around PAM. Um, so again, um, just wanted to uh, thank Dave for, uh, for, for joining us today. Um, and uh, you know, helping us understand a little bit more about uh, PAM in, within, the, within the higher education context. Um, again, I know that the teams have been answering your questions. This has been coming in on the on the chat window. But if there is uh, if there's any other questions um, that we haven't answered yet, we'll we'll get back to you um, uh, after this, uh, and we'll um, you know we'll respond um, as as quickly as we can. Um, again, thanks everyone for for listening. Just a reminder, we've got um, just one uh, further session just on uh, how I am relevant to uh, the the kind of overarching cybersecurity um, posture. Um, so if you want to join us for that, that will be uh, that'll be uh, kicking off shortly. So again, thanks for listening. Thanks again, Dave, and uh, enjoy the rest of the sessions. Have a great day. Thanks a lot.